Hi and Assalamualaikum to my respective lecturer, Sir Muhammad Ramlan bin Muhammad Arshad. So today, we are going to present our seminar paper entitled The Effectiveness of the Government in Handling the Nation's Crisis. Assalamualaikum again, Sir Ramlan. So we are from AM2860. Our group member consists of me, myself, Nur Shazwani, Nur Shahira, Muhammad Fikri, Nur Shahira and also Siti Nur Jana. Firstly, NPM, the history. NPM is considered as a near to perfect example of the public administration policy. Its history can be traced back in the late 1970s to early 1980s. There is a shift in the state ideology of advanced capital nation, for example, Australia and America, towards a conservative government of neoliberal. They hold the ideology that rejects the concept of having a large public sector, supports the private sector superiority, and emphasize market competition and service delivery. This was when the terms new public management come to take effect in forming the way we deliver to these public services. NPAM has changed on how the public sector delivers its service from a lousy traditional method to a more private sector style. The outline of NPAM is influenced by the ideas and management models of the private sector, but it is hoped that the government efficiency will produce positive results. Citizens will now be viewed as a customers, and their satisfaction every needs to be fulfilled. Thus, the big responsibility falls on the government in delivering the best service they can be. Secondly, NPM in Malaysia. The NPM concept has been adopted by the various governments, including Malaysia. The history of the implementation of NPM in Malaysia can be traced back to the 1980s during the premiership of Tun Dr. Mahdi Mohamed, which he introduced several policies to accommodate the implementation of NPM. For example, look at his policy in 1982, changing the role of the public sector. The philosophy during that day also has its own roles, with the promotion of economic liberalism by the external institutions such as the World Bank and the IMF. Soon after, Numerous new management practices emerged in providing better services for the people. For example, the quality control circle and the total quality management in the late 1980s and performance-based appraisal in the remuneration system in the early 1990s. Since the NPM is now considered as a blueprint for the public service system, the concept has been synchronized across all our government management agenda. Thirdly, the strategic management in the eyes of NPM. Strategic management can be understood by the strategizing of public entities in running their daily operation with the integration of strategy formulation and implementation. It is one of the management field branches that helps organization to plan, monitor, analyze, and assess all the necessities an organization need to meet its goals and objectives. The actual origin of strategic management can be traced back to thousand years earlier, but only in the 1960s, it was formally applied, but only primarily in war and politics, not in business. The rising usage of strategic management originated between the 1950s and 1960s with some of its famous pioneers, including Bruce Henderson. Henderson is famous for his expertise in the strategic management field. In the book, The History of Strategy, he stated that the rivalry between business can be tough with a lot of factors that can be counted in. But with a good strategic management, it can be the game changer that really differentiate them with one another. In correlation with the emergence of NPM, the history that NPM has given birth to various new fields of management are doing the traditional method. Deemed as the gold standard for the administrative reform, it has widely been used as a standard for all management fields, including the idea behind modernized strategic management. Since then, it has been widely used by the organization around the world as it has proven fruitful results. And aligned with the NPM, government administration has also adopted, including Malaysia. Last but not least, the strategic management, effectiveness of the government in handling the national crisis. In Malaysia, there is a limited publication of literature towards our public administration strategic management. However, since the usage of the strategic management is widely used by the other government in the world, alternatively, we will refer to them as a guideline for the seminar paper. 
we will be focusing on the application of the strategic management towards the effectiveness of the government in handling the nation crisis. Although Malaysia is considered to have a significantly low of a remarkable national crisis, it still does happen once in a blue moon. However, due to its rareness, it raises the question whether we have effective strategic management in dealing with the national crisis. In this seminar paper, we will dig down on the effectiveness of the government in handling the nation crisis based on the issue raised and several recommendations that could be implemented for the betterment in dealing with the nation crisis in the future. We have taken several remarkable national crises as our main references which are the annual flood, COVID-19 pandemic and the incursion of the Lahad Dato. Next, several issues arise will be covered by the next presenter. The first issue is poor management and slow recovery process at Relief Centre. There are different flood management systems in Malaysia such as Royal Malaysian Police, Special Search and Rescue Teams in Malaysia and many more are involved in which are based on MK and Directive Number 20. However, they are reactive because they are only respond after a disaster has occurred rather than developing a preparation policy. Besides, there is lack of strategic management plan or model since the victims face difficulties in disaster diversity aid after being rescued. They were discontent with management since the MK, JKN, MKN and district office do not execute in, in a systematic manner which they receive no rescue equipment, food and extra. In addition, the responsible agency is not effectively managing and maintaining the evacuation center. This is caused by no strategic management from the responsible agencies since there, there is lack of solid strategic planning models beforehand. Even the disaster management being ineffective since there are flaws when it comes to comprehension adopted by the Malaysian government. So, review of policy assistance is needed uh, to state that flood-related resettlement could be reviewed to be adopted for future enhancements. Next issue is COVID-19 outbreak in Malaysia. Coronavirus disease 2019 was originating from Wuhan and was confirmed by World Health Organization who on 20 on 12 January 2020 before becoming an outbreak in all countries. In Malaysia, the threat of COVID-19 became increasingly apparent when Singapore reported its first imported positive case in the Republic. The situation became worse on 11 March 2020 after International Health Regulations IHR Malaysia was informed by IHR Brunei that one positive case in Brunei was found to have attended a religious gathering in Sri Petaling, Mos Selangor, Malaysia. This gathering was attended by more than 10,000 participants from different countries with at least half of them coming from Malaysia. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Nushahira binti Muhammad Rafai. So I will proceed with the last issue which is the security issue relating to the incident of Lahad Datu incursion. Security is a high concern for all countries around the world and it involves the nation's survival to determine the country's safety. Like most uh, countries, Malaysia strongly protects its country from threats either in Peninsula Malaysia or Sabah and also Sarawak. However, uh, our country was surprised by a group of terrorist fighters known as the Royal Sulu Force invaded Lahad Datu on 9 February 2013. Free from threats is an important keyword in national security but the threats that come from internal and external factor would make citizens consider uh, their country's national security as not in a good condition. With the existence of terrorist group in the southern Philippines, this situation calls for Malaysia to always stay alert with the threats of terrorism. There are various questions arose uh, questioning the negligence of the nation defense structure and also the failure of Malaysian Armed Force and Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency. Uh, this is because they delay in detect the inflation of terrorist fighter that enable them to capture Kampung Tanduo and also uh, Felda Sahabat 17 in Sabah. The invention of Lahad Datu is actually surprised Malaysia because it involved uh, non-state actors from foreign country, which is a group of Filipinos. It clearly shows that the threats posed by non-state actor greatly affected security of the country. 
Since uh, Malaysia is located on the strategic location in the center of Southeast Asia, the close borderline between our neighborhood uh, makes it more challenging as there is a lot of area that need to monitor. As for the east coast of Sabah, which comprise a large span of 1,733 kilometers from Kudat to Tawau, it can be quite a demanding mission for the authorities to carry out surveillance and secure the borderline. Now moving on to solution. First solution is by strengthening basic necessities such as food supplies. It also applies the same for the early warning systems, the set or logistics and release centers. The National Security Council always have to make sure that to check the food supplies are enough. Next is creating permanent agencies for National Disaster Management and Relief Committee and, and its states and district level counterparts to increase the, to increase the readiness to, uh, to help the flood victims in the future. In order to protect the health of Malaysian citizens and preventing the outbreak, the government took many steps and one of the steps is Enforcing Movement Control Order or MCO. The MCO related to the restriction of movement of people into or out of an area. The Director General of the, of the Ministry of Health emphasized that the order enforced came under the prevention and control of Infection Disease Act 1988 and the Police Act 1967 in which involves essential business operation limitation, closing international borders, restrictions on public gathering and require Malaysians returning from abroad to a solution for 40 days quarantine. This will help to control the virus. Besides, another solution taken by Malaysian government in handling crisis is by increasing the funding. First, government introduced stimulus package worth RM250 billion on 27 March 2020 by Prime Minister Malaysia Tan Sri Mohidi Yassin. It aims to support small media enterprises that badly affected by pandemic. Other than that, Tan Sri announced an, and Tan Sri Mohidi Yassin announced an additional out. RM1 billion to purchase of equipment, services, and medical needs to overcome the COVID-19. Next, on 23rd March 2020, RM600 million was allocated to Ministry of Health right after the Economic Council meeting. RM500 million and RM100 million both will be utilized to purchase personal protective equipment (PPE) and 2,000 nurses' appointment on control basis, respectively. Okay, uh, I will discuss on the solution for security issue relating to the incident of Lahad Datu Inclusion, which is awareness of citizens living in the east coast of Sabah about ISCOM in securing the safety of Sabah Eastern Seaboard. Following the invasion of Lahad Datu, uh, the government took proactive measure by establish the Eastern Sabah Security Command, which is uh, known as ISCOM. As this uh, invention also involves non-state actors, Malaysia should always be careful to ensure that such incidents do not happen again because that chaos uh, makes the resident feel unsafe and can threaten the economic development of the country and the region. The effort taken uh, to control the safety of the coast is not only under Malaysia's uh, responsibility. As the countries coastal are shared with Indonesia and also Philippines, these two countries also need to provide energy to control the safety of their respective coasts. Assalamualaikum sir, my name is Siti Norjana Abu Hassan. Okay, move on to my part, which is the recommendation part. Uh, for the flood uh, crisis, the recommendation is that the government should improve the flood disaster management with effective preventive measure by creating a national flood risk management program. Therefore, Malaysia can take Netherlands Room for River program as a successful uh, model measure. The program involves lowering the level of flood uh, plants and constructions of flood bypasses. Uh, through this program, rivers are given small spaces to prevent flood disaster and thus ensure residents do not have to evacuate. Overall, in order to be successful, adequate uh, planning by Malaysian government involving all relevant parties, uh, resources and budget was needed to implement this long-term program. Okay, next, uh, recommendations on the COVID-19 cases. Since uh, there is no uh, safe and effective uh, treatment for COVID-19, vaccination will be the most effective method. 
of acquiring uh, health immunity to the virus. Here, the government should act fast in expanding vaccination centre following the increase in the cases of COVID-19. Okay, for example, increase uh, the drive to vaccination injections to speed up the process as people don't have to wait for too long to get uh, themselves vaccinated. This way can also make it easier for uh, those who are unable to walk, including uh, the disabled uh, persons. Uh, and other way can be increased uh, the mobile vaccination center to cope with those uh, living in rural rural areas that hardly can have internet problem and limitation uh, knowledge to book for uh, vaccination appointment. So overall, uh, when more people are getting vaccinated, uh, more chances of COVID-19 curve can be flattened. And lastly, our recommendation on Lahadatu incursions, the government should tighten the security by improving um, security asset and increasing the number of manpower. For example, um, using up-to-date installations of CCTV and latest, latest uh, drone technology for our civilian purpose. Uh, in addition, ASCOM must be equipped with a huge amount of manpower to effectively cover a wide range of 1,700 uh, kilometers east coast of Sabah. Other than that, the member of the security forces uh, selected on duty at border must also be the one who are truly uh, honest, trustworthy and uh, responsibility. This is important uh, to prevent uh, malpractice, uh, corruptions and illegal entry to Sabah. Overall, an increase in the number of security assets and improving manpower will be helpful in managing internal and external threat in Sabah border. In conclusion, conflict can happen everywhere around the world. However, the most important thing is having a strategic management plan in order to cope with the conflict. Having a strategic management in dealing with the national crisis shows how well the government can implement the strategy and policy taken, and most importantly, how effective the strategy can affect the nations and the public itself. And, and that's all from us. Thank you.